I'm Quentin from the UK. I'm Shanna from Portugal. And this is our Thomas 2000 school bus. So yes, this is, this is home. We have our electrical system all down here, inverter and your solo controller. So we can keep ourselves off grid. That's really just off grid um, work, I guess. So what kind of solar system do you guys have? So we've got a uh, 265 watt panel on the roof, um, which is okay in the summer, summer times. Um, right now we're not getting much from it. So our 12 volt bridge won't really run right now off it. So. This is our propane heater, which is a new installation, um, which is going to keep us warm. Uh, propane inside isn't the best idea always, but this is not totally insulated and we have a vent up on the roof. So bed number two, which is our um, guest bed, I guess, this folds out our, our hider bed. Um, when we were living in Tofino Resorts, we managed to get one of these cheaply off the, neighbor, the rival resort. Out. If there wasn't so much junk down there, it does now fit pretty nicely to give our guests a bed. That's going to be where you sleep. So how come you guys decided on the LED light strips? I think we're told, cause, so when we started converting it, we basically knew nothing. So we're told basically they're low um, consumption, energy consumption. So we have two, so four, six volt batteries under, under the bus. Um, which is, I guess, enough for, I don't know, just no consumption thing. So as much, as little power as we can possibly use is what we're trying to use. Um, yeah, we, have, we never had any problem with, with batteries powering this. Put some rods and then we fitted a mattress pad actually, the back of these curtains. It does make a difference actually, we found. Like, yeah, um, it's just a little bit. And it keeps peaking people out. Um, so that's the living room. And then maybe do you want to finish off with the, the living this area? This is kitchen. my domain, is it? Uh, this is our kitchen. Uh, initially, we had uh, just this kind of like size of a kitchen. Uh, we recently upgraded, uh, extended it, better wood on the countertop, some space for our uh, small fridge, which is it's not really a fridge, it's a 12 volt uh, cooler, um, but it does the job, does everything that we need. It's got uh, plenty plenty of space for what we need, really. Um, so under here we've got pretty much, again, the storage that uh, we need. Our water pump, our water pump there, and our water heater right in the corner. Uh, so third time was the charm because we tried two, two water heaters before and they didn't work for us. Pretty self-explanatory I guess, like we built everything ourselves here, uh, all the wood is, all the wood is, uh, was free actually, all like, you know, pallets that we've uh, taken off the streets, um, this that we got from a building site that was going for, to the, to the skip, uh, Quentin's engineering here with some like pipe uh, for some storage for the rods our plumbing system uh, also DIY uh, it was a lot of fun actually uh, learning how to solder each bit uh, you know our water it's pretty good really good pressure um, this then goes on to the to the bathroom site We've got a fake uh, brick wall here it's another fun project that uh, Quentin did. Um, yeah, it works really well. Like I think we've got all the space that we need. Uh, we've got some uh, more like space here if we want to kind of like sit down at the table, have a like you know proper sit down meal. Uh, again, pre wood, 
Quentin's like little project um, comes out, folds up, gives us you know a lot of space. Third part is the I guess uh, changing area, dressing room, <laughs> a walk-in wardrobe or wardrobe. Uh, this is some branch that Shana found on a on the beach in Dafina actually. Uh, clothes underneath with some it's like a piston, like a hydraulic, hydraulic um, piston that just. I haven't quite been in the right place, it doesn't quite stay up, but I just move them uh, by an inch forward, it might, it should work. The same wood from the worktop that keeps that design going. Oh yeah, we've got our, our wine cellar. Don't uh, forget the wine cellar. So we're trying to keep costs down at all time and when you're travelling, alcohol seems to be the biggest, biggest expense. Gonna be our wine cellar. Yeah, I think about, what, 4 by 5 to 20 bottles of wine is enough for any traveller. Um, <laughs> for a week. So you've got two down here which are um, just finishing the fermentation stage. It's a funny little thing in the States, they um, they charge you I think 20 cents per litre to carry it across the border. So um, if that's not alcohol yet, it might be okay. <laughs> we'll learn that. So. Um, bathroom. Um, so we've got our... Uh, a shower again, our pressure is brilliant and actually when we're staying in the resorts there's actually better pressure here than what they had, just not as warm. Feet. <laughs> so we haven't got hot water now so we have to be plugged in to um, either a generator or to um, uh, shore power to get uh, hot water because we've got a, a 1500 watt uh, water heater so we have to be plugged in for that. Um, that's the only downside with the hot showers. Compost toilet. Okay, we use peat moss, which is great. It's, it reduces the smell um, and covers it. That just goes out into a compost pile, I guess. And we finish with it. Um, and some of these, it's actually quite funny. The um, uh, towel holders, these like um, uh, painted, painted uh, taps. Well, that's quite a nice little addition. Um, and then the bedroom, um, which, so it's a queen bed, it fits perfectly. I'm still trying to get some pistons from like a, a, a car trunk from some second hand wrecking place because this thing is very heavy, it does lift up and we can store things underneath it. Um, some sheets we might have pinched from the resorts, <laughs> um, outdoor heater, all sorts under there. Um, but yeah, it's pretty heavy, so we need to keep that. We need to get a way of holding that up. Um, yeah, and that's, I guess, a lot. There's a the upstairs is up there. <laughs> I think a decking is is I don't know, quite far in the future, but you can sit up there on a not so windy day. Good view. Um, that's a lot. I think that's everything. I think so. What was your idea behind getting a school bus and converting it? I think it must have been a series of uh, different uh, blogs and videos we saw online um, and some, I think a friend sent me a, a website for a, a school bus um, company that went to liquidation and was selling their buses um, so cheaply and they are, they had some like max five grand Canadian for a, a big shell so that was the first start to be sort of learn how cheap it is to get a shell. Um, at a time we were living in Hong Kong, living in a tiny home already, but a tiny home where you pay £2,000 a month for it, so it, the math didn't quite out there. Um, so yeah, we saw this, we saw a lot of blogs online, a lot of other people doing similar things, and we thought we'd give it a try. Um, I guess overall it was the idea of like being able to go anywhere we wanted, travel anywhere we wanted, and take, you know, our house with us. Yeah. Um, I think that was ultimate. Ul ultimately, for yeah. me, was like the the idea. A big, you know, a big bus like this allows us to have like a proper apartment inside. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Are there any limitations? Because you are still living small to a degree. Do you find that there are any limitations with that lifestyle? Not for me. Um, I think that I like small spaces. Uh, I never dreamed of a big house. Uh, every big house that I've lived in before, I thought it was a little bit too much. Um, uh, 
there are always limitations because you're not used to such a small space. Um, the main ones might be like, you know, when you've got like, you know, maybe six people inside, you know, it's hard to kind of like maneuver everyone. Um, apart from that, everything else is perfect size for me. Yeah, uh, it, it does work perfectly. It, it actually does encourage you to go outside and um, to use your surroundings. Um, I mean, it's as cosy, as big as, like I said, most spaces I've lived in. Um, I mean, the small thing like the shower could be a bit more spacious if you were living in paradise, maybe. I've been in places with more more um, closed space, closed storage. But other than that, no, I don't think. I mean, I don't think I've ever, ever, ever had a house with a, a spare room. So this is like, it's, it's, it's not bad actually for that. What kind of advice would you to give to somebody that would be interested in transitioning to this kind of lifestyle? Um, well, if, if, if that transition includes building uh, the bus uh, or the van, uh, I would definitely say preparation uh, in terms of uh, materials, layout, um, that that's that's that, that's a big for me like looking back and you know we were fairly prepared we had studied a little bit we kind of knew what we were getting into but we did a lot of things along the way so the layout we kind of like had an idea but then you know changed our minds because we didn't know how the bus configuration actually was etc so if you're a little bit more prepared if you know what you're how you're going to design the bus inside um, it's great it means that you can buy your materials or get your materials um, straight away and and things would probably progress a lot uh, a lot faster uh, we had to uh, live in a building site for a while and there was four of us as well so that was very testing uh, so I I would definitely recommend do that uh, get get prepared first uh, in terms of like the other part of the lifestyle, um, there is no advice but just do it because once you actually realize that anyone can do anything, like we didn't know how to build things, like, and we don't really know much now, but um, you know, the, the biggest part from, from me working out whether it's actually value for money and, and worth worth the project in the, say the five months we've been building I've learned how to do carpentry we learn how to do carpentry, plumbing, electric, electrics these are skills that people charge a fortune to do anyway and it's, it's actually not easy but it's really accessible and it's all as a tutorial online for everyone, everyone's done these, these things before and people along the way like help you and teach you and mm. you know give their piece of advice and it's, it's really enriching I think yeah yeah, especially in Canada, like we, we've so much helping people in, in like Canadians being so giving and from based from materials to plot to um to, to um tools to, and to like and you know, places to stay and things and help and physical help like yeah, you know we've yeah. had like people that we met and you know next day they come in and and they help us like yeah. wire you know the the electrics or yeah. you know they help us put the sink in in place like yeah. small things like that that make such a big difference um, to the whole thing and I guess yeah like when, once you start realizing that you can do anything and you don't have to be stuck to a lifestyle mm. that you don't enjoy then you know the big city or whatever it is that makes people do this um, it's just really enjoyable and you get in touch with nature a lot more um, you appreciate things like you take that time to sit here and you know enjoy the view and share it with people um, I think it's definitely go and yeah. go do it hey what's up it's Forrest I just finished filming with Quentin and Shanna and where can they find you it follows on uh, school and the gang on Instagram and schoolie and the gang on Facebook